but we're not going to be saved without them either. If you think you can work and earn it, that's legalism. You're going to be lost until you give that up. But once you are brought into the family and connected to the vine, works follow. And that's why I quoted that text that stopped with it. I come quickly to give every man according as his works have been. Oh, there are plenty of them in the New Testament. Another one is there. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good what? Works. That's why Paul said, let no man deceive you. Before you start listening and throwing things away, get into your Bible yourself and know that you understand what the Lord is saying. And I'll be honest with you, I want Jesus to come. I want him to come. I, I, I think about it a lot. I think about it driving along the highways. I think about it when I hear and read about Haiti and places like that. Even so come Lord Jesus. Because when he comes, he's going to take us to another home. He's going to take us away from earthquakes and tsunamis and fires and floods. He's going to take his people away. We were talking about joy and happiness. And, and I hate to disclaim either because when Jesus comes, we're going to have both. But that joy is not dependent on circumstances. It's dependent on our connection with the vine. That's what it depends upon. I, I visited an island where at one point everybody practiced cannibalism. And my guide took me inside a small museum and they had a row of large photographs all the way around the top of the aboriginals who practiced cannibalism and then the guide said to me, Pastor Brooks, do you notice anything peculiar about them? And immediately I said, yes, I do. Not a single one is smiling. Not a one seems to be happy. He said, that is what I wanted you to say. There is no joy in Satanism, in following his directions, in listening to his suggestions, but when... We are united with the true vine. There flows from him through us a joy. And even as Ridley and Latimer were about to be burned at stake, one said to the other, play the man. Maybe it means we'll start a fire here that will spread throughout the world. Play the man. And as the flames licked up and took away their breath, they were joyfully singing songs. The Lord is going to take us away from here. And the message we've been given to preach is an evacuation message. Now, if this gets through, I will have been blessed today. The purpose of God is not just to make us rich and, and to earn this and to earn that and to practice noble professions. That's good. Occupy till I come. But the message God is sending is an evacuation message. It's how to get out of here alive and remain alive. And then he talks to us about reunion. I love the text, 1 Thessalonians 4. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. It's verse 13. Now a little further it says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Would you say amen? amen. He's got a place to take us. It's called a city, four square. Don't have time to talk about it. Somebody said it's 375 miles on each side and it's as big as the nation of Australia. Plenty good room in the Father's kingdom. You don't have any graveyards taking up space. You don't have any jails and penitentiaries. You don't have war memorials and all these things taking up space. Plenty good room. The farm that feeds everybody is just one tree called the tree of life. 
The water system is one river flowing out of the throne of God. I told you, you read the spirit prophecy and you find things you never found before. Listen, Ellen White says, when we get there, none will require nor desire repose. What? We're going to be up there a thousand years and you don't even get sleepy. Isn't that wonderful? Some of us can't even stay awake in church. <laughs> well, the disciples couldn't either when Jesus prayed. The walls of the city are transparent jasper. <clears throat> and the holy city will come down. It'll come down to this earth. It'll come through Orion. I was preaching in the Philippines and talked about that. And a lady professor came to me after service and said, would you like to see Orion? I said, of course. So she took me to the room. It was after hours. And two or three students came along and they touched some buttons and the whole roof rolled back. And when that happened, there was a great big telescope. And she got up there and she found it. She said, yeah, look. And I looked into Orion. But Hubble has been out there taking pictures. You know the Hubble telescope? And I read one day in one of the magazines that they can't seem to get a front-on view of Orion. They always are seeing it from the side. Now they have some excellent things they use to describe it. They talked about star-studded walls. This thing is so big the Holy City will pass through it. And the glory of God will come through and set that thing as it were on fire. I want to be in the holy city at that time, don't you? Now, if they could get Hubble around into the right place and shoot it straight on, I think they might look farther than God will permit into the very throne room of God. He's coming, and after the millennium, the holy city comes down, and he puts his foot on the Mount of Olives and levels off the plain and the holy city will land there. But what I was bringing that up for was the walls around the city are transparent. Jasper. Now, there are other words. Opaque, you can't see through. Translucent permits light, but you can't see through it. But when it's transparent, you can see. And the Bible says, when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. But even worse, think of the wicked. And no wicked man will be in worse shape than a former Seventh-day Adventist. The most wretched creature in hell will be a church member who turned and walked away from truth. And now they just got up. In the second resurrection, holy city is there, the saints are there, the throne of God is there, and Satan now is loosed to deceive again. He's got plenty of folks to work with for those who follow the crowd. And as Satan is trying, he knows, he knows the word, he knows the promises, he knows the prophecies. But deception is so terrible. He thinks me there's a little chance we can take this city. And the Bible says they compass the camp of the saints about. And when they do, the wicked can look through because they are transparent both from the inside out, outside in. And hell is going to be exacerbated by the fact that you see what you missed and what you sold so cheaply. And then Christ shall be inaugurated, King of kings, Lord of lords, and every knee shall bow. And those who listened to the enemy and, and heard his deceptions and followed his suggestions, now look to see what he's doing. And, and I wish I could see it when the devil himself falls down to worship for every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, Jesus is Lord. And then in embarrassment he rises and he 
organizes his army and he's got IEDs and he's got these things that fly unmanned and he's got atomic and nuclear weapons and he's got all of this ready to go and they surround the city and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them and we are through with sin and its effects forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.